You gather us, we are here. You gather us in joy and in fear. You gather us in hope and in despair. You gather us in public and in private. You gather us in body and in spirit. There is earth below us, we are rooted in God. There is air around us, God sets us free. God, you gather us, you are here. Let us pray. Holy One, you meet us in every time and place, on the cusp of the promised land, out under the stars, deep within the sanctuary, sitting at the table, even at the end of everything. Send your spirit among us, nestle us in the warm shadow of your wings. Open your, our hearts to notice you everywhere, even this time, even this place. Amen. Our first hymn is number 722, O Christ, Your Heart Compassionate. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3 this time. is number 716, Lord of all nations, grant me grace. This time let's sing verses 1, 3, and 5.
A reading from Psalm. O God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in day and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you, so I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips when I think of you on my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. So here we are, starting week three of this series. You might be getting a gist of this theme. You are here as broader than just our little lives. Again, I have the theme of the people who have had to leave their homes for some reason and find themselves in another land. Today's theme is a new sanctuary. The question comes to mind, what exactly is a sanctuary? The image that came with this series is a picture of an inside of a Gothic-style church. But is that the only sanctuary? For me, it was helpful to think about a sanctuary in non-human terms. Have you ever been to a wildlife sanctuary? What qualifies it as a sanctuary? For animals, it is moving them from a habitat that is dangerous for some reason and moving them to a place they can live and thrive and be known. How do we translate that into human terms? So in the early 1980s, many Central American refugees entered the United States to seek asylum. Significant numbers of them were from countries like Guatemala and El Salvador, where the violence of political conflict and revolution threatened their everyday lives. However, U.S. policy designated these people as economic migrants instead of refugees fleeing persecution, making it difficult for asylum cases to succeed. As asylum cases failed and the U.S. began to deport Central Americans to their countries of origin where they would face unsafe conditions, congregations of various denominations all around the United States declared themselves sanctuaries and publicly committed to shielding refugees from detention and deportation. The sanctuary movement was born. In the mid-2010s, a new wave of refugees and migrants began to arrive in the U.S. Just as in the 1980s, many of them feared violence because of political situations in their home countries, with new attention on the arrival of undocumented people in the country. The immigrations, customs, and enforcement, they renewed their efforts to detain and deport people who had been living in the United States for a long period of time. The sanctuary movement regathered as the new sanctuary movement to protect undocumented people under threat of deportation. You may remember it in 2017 in New Haven, Connecticut, First um, Summerfield United Methodist Church gave sanctuary to Marcos of, um, Reyes, who was an undocumented man from Guatemala who arrived in the U.S. in the late 1990s and been living with his family in Connecticut ever since. As his deportation date arose, family members still in Guatemala began receiving threats of violence and of death on the day of his scheduled departure, fearing for his own safety and for that of his family. He chose sanctuary over deportation. He lived at First and Summerfield for four months, helping the congregation with carpentry um, skills. He was finally able to return home when the ICE agreed to stay his deportation orders. Another sanctuary recipient stayed at First and Summerfield for more than three years. Nelson Gonzalez talked about the challenges of living in the sanctuary. Staying here is pretty much like jail, he told the paper. He couldn't step foot off of the church property without risking arrest. He had been the primary earner for his family. But to stay in sanctuary, he had to leave his factory job he couldn't see his wife or children or help in daily tasks, like getting the children ready for school. A church, a synagogue, or a mosque is not a home. New sanctuary residents live in 
improvised accommodations and may only have a mattress in an office or Sunday school room. They cannot leave the property, sometimes for months or years at a time. But the sanctuary affords, what that does afford, is psychological, not just physical. It offers residents a space to know that they are safe, they are near family and seen by God. Our psalm tonight starts off with longing. Not, not that consumer-driven longing, but some true longing for someone or something that is born out of a relationship of love and support, a relationship full of memories and moments to share. The psalm invites us into that same longing for our God. Its first words are personal. Oh God, you are my God. Lent reminds us of this personal and intimate connection we share with Christ. We are called to remember our longing for communion with God. Even those of us who aren't refugees long to be seen by God. A psalm prayer continues with praise of God's great love or hesed, which is to be better than life. It is God's unconditional love for us, and it costs God a great deal. The prayer reminds us that it is better than life itself because it transcends life. It was there at the beginning when God's love proved stronger than God's anger, and it continued to the cross and beyond. It is what will become, will welcome us home in the arms of God at our earthly death. God's ways are a reason to praise and bless God's name. We could spend our lives trying to contemplate such love, but the magnitude of it is, is far beyond our understanding. We can do nothing but offer praise and wonder at the depth of God's mercy. This is a psalm that praises God's faithfulness and love throughout the generations, but the intimacy reminds us that God's acts are not only communal, but they are also personal. Without tending, the relationship withers, and the result is alienation and spiritual death. God tends to one side, but it remains our responsibility to tend the other side actively on our part. What better time than the season of Lent to remember again and again God's power and substance that is given freely for us. Amen. Let us pray. The whole world cries out for the presence of God. Together we pray for all who are in need. We pray for peaceful places. Let countries, peoples, and homes know God's peace. We pray for loving places. Let relationships, companionships, and friendships experience God's love. We pray for healing places. Let everybody experience God's healing. We pray for safe places. Let all who seek refuge experience God's safety. We pray for just places. Let all the ends of the earth experience God's justice. God of every time and place, send your spirit of peace, love, healing, safety, and justice to every part of creation. Break what needs breaking, mend what needs mending, renew what needs renewal. We pray in Jesus' name whose presence illumines all places. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 564, God Who Made the Earth and Heaven. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. Thank you. 
with the blessing of God. Remember that this blessing follows you no matter the places to which you are called. Remember that this blessing waits for you even where you least expect to find it. Be blessed in the name of God who inspires, inhabits, and ignites us tonight and every night. Amen.